I think I just gave birth to a bouncing baby hernia. Higher! <clears throat> I got it, I got it! Ow! Hello. Yes, Commissioner? Holy cap wearing catfish flopping a crime heap. We're on our way. Did he get the notes I sent him? Yes, but he said to stop carving them into the suspects. He can't read them without his bifocals. What if I just write bigger? Forget that, Max. We're after the most infamous organized crime outfit in the city. The Toy Mafia. The cutthroat killers with no respect for human life, but an odd predilection for delightful children's toys? The same. I love those guys! The Commissioner has reason to believe that the Toy Mafia's secret headquarters are located in the one place no one would ever suspect. Teddy Bear's Mafia-Free Playland and Casino. The sallowest place on Earth? Oh, boy! Well, it's not going to be all laughs and dyspepsia, little chum. It's a rescue op. The commissioner sent an undercover mole to investigate, but he hasn't reported in weeks. Our job is to make contact with the mole and see if he needs help. Is he a large, star-shaped mole, or more of a beauty mark? No idea, Max. To find him, we're supposed to give the code phrase, does the carpet match the drapes? And what'll he say? He'll say, well, I never, then smack me across the face. Sounds great! Let's do this! All right, and hello. How's it going? How are you folks doing? Um, yeah, we're here. We're playing Sam and Max again. And this is a little loud for my ears. I think it should be okay to listen to, but actually I wanted to check that now that the game is in full spin to hear if it actually goes down. Yeah, that sounds okay, doesn't it? Music is not too loud. Maybe let's just have them look at something just to be sure. Hi Sam, this is your son. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to listen to the answer machine messages. Does that and work? Give Max a smack from me. Alright, that looks decent enough, I think. Um I talked over that message. Let's see what other messages we have this week. Hi, Sam. This is yourself again. Don't forget to erase the answering machine messages before you listen to them. And give Max his own battle tank from me. Hi, Sam. This is yourself. Don't forget to listen to the answering machine messages. And give Max a smack from me. Okay. Only these two messages this time. One of these days, we're going to finish that game. I'm still working on getting the rest of the darts from the police impound. I'm still expecting it to be uh, properly interactable, the dark dark board. So yeah. So yeah. Um, how has the week been to you? Have you had an enjoyable Saturday and uh, start of the Sunday, or whatever the time is for you? Um, So at least. Where's the rest of the news collection, Max? It's a surprise. Anything out there? Whee! Hello? Jerk! Anything new? Hubert's still clinging to life by the skin of his leaf. Hubert is amazing. Spades. 
Hello. Hey, an ace. An extra card up your sleeve and never hurts. Except when the other guy catches you with it and decides to riddle every inch of your body with high caliber bullets and then dump your mutilated corpse in an empty field. Yeah, except then. <laughs> Jimmy Two Teeth, fence. It's a sad day when hardworking rodents have to make their living as a freestanding form of enclosure. Uh, I think that's fence in the buys and sells stolen goods sense of the word. Beat it! You're getting in way of my customers. What customers? Mm-hmm. Exactly. This charred pile of scrap serves as a touching reminder of the fun we had at WARP TV. I've determined that whether for food or for sport, I just really enjoy frying things. <laughs> ah, Brady Culture's hair. It makes for an unwieldy but oh so enchanting memento of our first case in a long while. He howled like a sick wallaby when I shaved it off him. Good times. I like that they put, like, every episode, they put stuff from the previous episode in here. That's really nice. Um, just give it, you know, like, a little more of a lived-in touch. Not much, uh, but still, it also, you know, reminds you a little bit and, you know, gives you a sense of achievement, so that's nice. We should have Jesse James's hand appraised one of these days. I bet it's especially valuable because it's autographed. But I also wish they, they had the time to uh, add different uh, phrases, you know, just like to have a progression, to have a reason to look at stuff again. When I got this thing, I thought it would be useful. Where else would we keep the pieces of paper that we're never going to look at again? Look at something that's not a place to walk to, we'll just walk off in the opposite direction. Our thugs and hoodlums file cabinet is almost full. Can I help it if I come from a large family? Ants are just like people, aren't they? Yeah, kind of cute from far away, but really scary when you look at them through a microscope. Alright. I guess we can do here at the office today. Trophies, exactly, yeah. Of course, if this was like some, you know, like a larger, more integrated game, uh, or a game with, uh, you know, decisions, you know, like in the outer worlds where it would reflect, like where your captain's cabin would reflect, um, like which factions you were in good standing with or like who you had um, yeah yeah you know things like that that was also pretty nice you know especially with like the like if you in some cases made a compromise decision you would actually get like two separate items for uh, each of the faction uh, I like that everyone gets the same trophies yeah I guess well in this game if you had, uh, back when, you know, they sold each I episode separately, um, if you had just bought the last episode, you would probably have a cupboard full of, uh, trophies for episodes that, uh, you never played. Whee! The drawers are just painted on to make the desk seem useful. It's <laughs> a good excuse for not having to, you know, have something to do with the desk. Nothing useful in here. How ironic! What can we do? Hello. Phone? Yes. Yes. Holy mace wielding Minotaur King! Who are you talking to? Nobody. Just practicing for next time. <laughs> All right. Is Mr. Spatula fine? Whee! Good old Mr. Spatula. The exact same Mr. Spatula we've always had. Certainly not just some other fish we've been calling Mr. Spatula ever since we found the original floating belly up in this very water cooler just last week. Careful, Sam. Keep it up and he might realize he's just a replacement fish. Hello. I wouldn't want him to know that. Right. 
Let's see what Sybil is doing this week. No more tabloid drag, but... Witnessing. Okay. Wait. Um, let's check out the ads. Posters back here first. The Spin the Bottle Championship is coming up. I like when they do the sudden death round with the Molotov cocktail. Same as last time, I think. Do you like taking in some pro wrestling? I think I've seen that one. Hey, it's the Indie Hanks Film Festival. What do they do? Show that second movie over and over again? Juggling, fire dancing. Is that one? Sort. Swallowing. Or something an effigy party? Hey, it's the Indie yeah, Hanks Film song. Festival. What do they do? Show that Post second movie over and, and over again? Okay. Okay, those are basically the same signs as last time. I wanted new signs. <laughs> Give me a sign. Hello, Sam. Hello, Max. Hey, it's our favorite short attention span careerist. This time, I found the job for me. I've become a professional trial witness. What exactly is a professional trial witness? Oh, it's great. We give dramatic testimonies, sequester in ritzy hotels, and order room service in the name of truth and justice. It almost sounds like you're enriching yourself at the expense of this country's overcomplicated legal system. <laughs> Do you have a problem with that, Mr. Freelance Police? Yeah, why didn't we think of it? <laughs> what led you to decide to become a professional witness? Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times taught me a lot about the truth, you know? The truth is far out there? Exactly. And then one day I got called for jury duty, and the rest is history. What's your next career going to be? Oh, there is no next career. I'm sticking with trial witnessing for good. Do you have your first case yet? No, but I'm waiting for a call from the district attorney. He says he's got something I'd be perfect for. You don't feel uncomfortable getting a case first and then being a witness for it? Not at all. You see, the problem with most trials is that crimes are witnessed by someone who's unprepared for what's going to happen or who doesn't have sufficient training or skills to accurately remember or relate what happened. With my background and widely varied skill set, I'm perfect. That makes sense. Should I be afraid? Probably. <laughs> that does sound scary. It sounds like the district attorney. I mean, if the district attorney calls her, that basically means she's probably like a, a fake witness. No, seriously. Any ideas about your next cockamamie profession? I resent that. Does the carpet match the drapes? Interior decorating was like eight months ago. I'm a trial witness now. <laughs> Isn't trial witnessing a trifle dangerous? Oh no, we're protected by the truth. Right. We'll be back, Sybil. Bye, boys. Keep one eye on the truth. Nice cactus. Saguaro? Vinyl. Hey, if you dip that in ink, you could do 30 tattoos at once. If I could scare up 30 customers at once, I'd still be in the tattoo business. Relax. Whee! Okay, let's check in with Bosco. We'll never know what he wants to do. Oh, L train. <laughs> El train de Mexico. Or is it just the L train? Crosstown Limited. 
course, it doesn't stop anywhere near here. Nice idea to kind of, on one hand, you know, make it feel. I guess this is supposed to be kind of New York or something. And so I guess they needed a. Uh, what do you call it? Subway, but it's overground. Or like a, a regional train thingy. The Alien Love Rectangle Post. I had no idea there was such fierce competition among alien love polygon tabloids. Myra Stump shocks crowd with new hairstyle. Wow, talk about a slow day for news. I don't talk about the news, Sam. I make it. Athlete's foot outbreak linked to global warming. Ooh. Hmm, are those? Yep, they've resorted to filling the candy machine with antidepressants. How depressing. <laughs> hey, Bosco. Nice flapjack. Son of Cordon Blue. Who is this, uh, Bosco? <laughs> hey, guys, it's me, Bosco. No. But you may call me Jean-Francois Sissy Pants. The cowardly French anarchist. So, Bosco, why'd you get Frenchified? They saw right through my British disguise. I don't know how they did it, but they found me. Who? The Mafia. The toy Mafia. They've got it in for me. Take a number, guys. What manner of nightmarish atrocities has the toy Mafia committed against you? Nothing yet. But I know what they are planning, and it is terrible. Are they planning to tie you down, tape your eyelids open, and turn on the 24-hour Midtown Cowboys channel? Well, not that bad. I have reason to believe they are planning to deliver something to my star. Another delivery conspiracy? What could a band of ruthless toy mongers possibly want to put in here? I don't know, but it is no matter. They will never be able to deliver anything to my store. Or my name is not Jean-Francois Sissy Pants. But your name's not Jean-Francois Sissy Pants. Shh, they don't know that. <laughs> What's keeping the Toy Mafia from making a delivery? Well, for one, I am watching OA. They will never sneak past me. Yeah, just like Wizard couldn't sneak past you. And two, even if they do get past me, I got a fail safe. It's the greatest invention the world has seen since b -tag. I call it the Bosco Tech Anti-Delivery System. What's the acronym for that? Uh, also b -tag. It is b -tag's Part D! How does b -tag's Part D work? First is the anti-delivery camera. It keeps a massive photo recognition database of every inconvenient item I stock. How completely impractical! If anything gets placed in the store that the anti-delivery camera does not recognize, it is put out on the street! Vive la France! Does the carpet match the drapes? No! And you know why? Because the man doesn't want them to! He's threatened by their potential unification! Mm-hmm. We want to buy something. Oui, oui, monsieur. Monsieur. Okay. What do you got? Ooh la la! Behind the counter, I have the latest in Bosco Tech innovation. A device non parallel on chocolate. Is that good? Oui, oui. This I call a miniature listening device. It can fit in any cravat under any chapeau. What's it do? It listens. You can use it to hear secret conversations, no? No. I mean, yes. Okay, senor sissy pants. We'll take that miniature listening device. The price is 10 million dollars. 10 million? Wait, is that 10 million in crazy fake French dollars or 10 million in regular dollars? Regular dollars. 
the market is bearish on crazy fake French dollar. Hmm. So we have to find 10 million dollars somewhere to buy his newest invention. Do you have any stray tufts of Sasquatch hair? Nope! Do you have any hats in the shape of a cow udder? Nope! Do you have any rubber chickens with a pulley in the middle? Nope! Monkey Island reference. Woo! Do you have any amulets of protection against greater hypnosis? Nope! Did we have the same answers in the previous episode? Do you have any... Nope! How do you know what he was gonna... Nope! Do you? Nope! Do... Nope! <laughs> Do you? No. Okay. Nothing for us right now. Zit. Look outside. It's the toy mafia. What? Where? Fools. There is no one. <laughs> Sorry, Bosco. Just yanking your chain, amigo. Sacre bleu. I could do this all day, and I intend to. See you later, Bosco. I know not this Bosco of whom you speak, but if I see him, I shall bid him a reservoir. What do we have here? Organ trader, self-loathing weekly, hot bunny. Ooh, let me see that. Hot bunny? No, self-loathing weekly. Oh. Bosco isn't really fooling anyone, is he? Nope! I knew he was French all along! Huh. You don't have ten million bucks on you, do you, little buddy? Not today, but we could always hustle somebody for it if you want to. Bosco sure keeps a sharp eye on his store, doesn't he? You said it! His store and ludicrously convoluted conspiracy theories are the only things he really cares about! This new anti-delivery system of Bosco's is interesting. I feel the distinct urge to break it, but then I feel that about a lot of things. How much more inconvenient can this place get? It's not that inconvenient. Besides, I think anyone who wants to buy a blue sludgy should have to provide a urine test. I mean, what have they got to hide? It's always the cute and cuddly ones that go fascist the fastest. Shall we shop? Let's do. Are those the same two weenies that were in there a month ago? Are you the same two weenies that were in here a month ago? The anti-delivery camera. Is anything interesting? Oh, we have the card. I'd rather not advertise the ace up my sleeve. Okay. Just hoping I could. The anti-delivery camera. Yes, yes, I want to click the shelf. Foamy bread. Made from real styrofoam? No, artificial styrofoam. I think it's the tinge of green that makes this coffee especially appealing. I take my coffee green, like my men. Sludgies. This week's flavors, avocado de menthe and fudge pâté de foie gras. Oh, good. For a second, I thought it was something disgusting. Max, I've got a great idea involving you, a microwave, and six feet of aluminum foil. Go on. Maybe another time. One of these days, I want to find out what they do. Not chose. They're mine. Not chose. There seems nothing new here. Ketchup, mustard, and purple stuff. As vaguely referred to on TV. Ooh, fun! All right, call it working Same again. Max. I am not getting in that thing again. It took me weeks to get the fishy smell out of my fur. Chilled and preserved fluids. I wonder if Bosco used the fluid sample I submitted. 
Uh, I hope not. It's a bit, uh... I mean, you know, I understand that they, you know, they can't re-record everything and it's worth, you know, investing the money for voice recording and animation and all that um, in, you know, like, in the main story of the game that everyone will, will do, you know. But it would be fun to be able to explore here by, uh, by just, uh, you know, like, clicking stuff and getting a new message each time. Big smokes. Don't smoke, kids. Unless you're on fire. Then it's only natural. Good point. Is that clock correct? Well, it's only got one hand, so probably not. Nothing like a gaggle of security cameras pointed at a guy to make him feel at home. I'm comfortable with it because I'm uncommonly photogenic. Hmm. I guess nothing here. would have liked a listening device. Sounds like a very useful thing that we'll have to run around for later. I wonder uh, if we can do Where are we going, stopping Sam? someone's car again. Oh no, we can't even go cruising. Teddy Bears, Mafia Free, Playland and Casino. Goody! They like mailing people by giving them fake speeding tickets. Welcome to Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Ah! That face. My name's Lovey Bear. Boy, do we have some fun and games for you. Here, take this token amount of tokens as our way of saying welcome and go spend a lot of money. Holy domesticated ursins, Max. Lovey Bear here's got the same head as that hypnotic teddy bear from Myra's talk show. You think that little talk show bear had a litter of giant babies? I don't know, Max. Call it canine intuition, but I think our mole discovered something about these teddy bears he shouldn't have. We've got to find him and get to the bottom of this. You're lucky this mask doesn't have ear holes or I might have heard that secret conversation you just had right in front of me. What? <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> Hi Link XNS. Thank you for your great duets on Twitch things. Oh, thank you. I I hope you're enjoying them. I plan to make a few more as long as I can. Um you've you've probably heard that they're they've announced that they're closing down Twitch things for the on on like in December. So um there's a petition out there. Um that you might be able to sign. You know, you don't know what it helps, but you know, at least uh, by signing the petition, at least there might be, you know, it, it might help a little bit, or it might not help, and it's not much work. It's on uh, change.org. If if you haven't seen it yet, uh, I can probably dig out the link. Uh, I don't know why they're closing it down yet. It, it seems uh, seems weird. Um, hi, Lucius. How's it going? Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I don't know why they're actually closing down Twitch things, but, um, uh, from what I know, it's, uh, uh, like, they, they've said, like, something generic, like, oh, we're going to refocus how we do music, um, so I'm kind of hoping that, you know, they're just, like, pulling out of making the game. 5.30 for you. Yeah, it's 5.30 for me as well, but uh, some other people are in different time zones. <laughs> so I kind of, uh, yeah, I guess I said good morning. Um, yeah, anyway, like they, they said they kind of want to, you know, support music more general. So I'm kind of hoping that they're just going, we're not going to make this game again. And then, um, you know, harmonics for example, which are the people who made Twitch Sings and who make other karaoke games, I think. Um, uh, maybe they can just, you know, Twitch enable their own game and Twitch doesn't have to bother with all the 
uh, you know, like with everything there anymore. We'll see. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping for that, you know, that they'll, you know, because it's it's kind of difficult um, to make, um, you know, like to do anything to do with music on Twitch because of all the rights issues and things like that that you will have to sort out before you do that. And then, of course, once you have, uh, you know, license to do something with music, um, you would probably still get occasionally flagged wrongly and would have to use their appeals process and send them, like, the confirmation I really am allowed to use these sound samples. And so um, I'm kind of hoping that they're, you know, doing something more like that where, you know, they will detect music and then tell you, hey, we've detected this music will charge you this much to, uh, you know, pay the licensing body if you think that's not right. Here's the appeals button or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe they, they're they doing something like that. And then, you know, they don't need to, to run the whole karaoke game. They can just let some other company do that and, you know, integrate. Um, the music rights licensing... The music category seems to be more prominent now. The music rights licensing is limited time and has to be renegotiated, you think? Yeah, I think that they closed it for the end of the year is probably exactly, um, you know, because, well, they, they said, like, as per their obligations, they would be deleting the Twitch Sings clips um, by the end of the year. So I think they're starting on December 1st, actually. So if you have any clips you want to keep and download them, better download them right now. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, that that's how like licensing of everything works. Basically, you have repeating payments or something, or you have a time-limited contract in most cases. Especially for like you know commercial popular music, um, and so um, it totally makes sense that for a game like this they would have running costs to keep music going. And of course they also have the issue that you know sometimes someone comes to a company and says, "Hey, I want an exclusive contract for." Uh, that happens a lot with like music on Netflix and things like that, um, and so um, with. Um, with their, like, with movies on Netflix, it's usually that, you know, sometimes a TV station gets an exclusive license for this movie, like, for example, for, I don't know, um, for a popular Christmas movie, like, for Christmas, so that no other TV station can get it. Of course, exclusive also means these days that you can't have that movie on, like, iTunes and things like that. Um, and so... Um, there is always um, this thing where like there's certain so-called windows where movies will be available because nobody has an exclusive and then there's certain times of the year where it will suddenly disappear unless the streaming service or whatever that you have um, or even the online store um, has a license uh, for, like, has, for example, that exclusive license for that time frame. Um, and I guess for music it's probably the same, you know, there are probably cases where someone gets an exclusive somehow, um, and then they would have to remove stuff, or want to, you know, like, you always want to go, well, if I make a contract for 50 years or something, what if, you know, money is worth less? Because, like, if, if you give someone a long-lasting license, then of course you do it because you know you will have that stable income. But on the other hand, the other person will also know they have that stable cost. So if, for example, the dollar goes down or whatever and you, know, uh, you can't buy as much, um, then you've made a deal. And usually you know, money gets to be worth less over time. So um, if you have a long-lasting contract, that means basically at the end you're paying less than at the start just because money is worth less. Um, and so... Um, and on the other hand, um, 
the person who gives it to you knows that they will get this amount of money and will factor in what they expect inflation to be and things like that. So, um, you know, it's always kind of limited. And uh, we've had a similar case a while ago with um, uh, Alan Wake, the computer game that had a lot of custom music, uh, like pop music in it. And um, a while ago, they suddenly went like, okay, we'll have to take it out of the store because the music licenses are running out. And then they did like a sale where you could get it like, I think like for three bucks or something um, to, um, to get it still with the old music. And, um, and I think like it's in some stores again, but I don't know if they, you know, changed the price because they renegotiated the contracts or if they actually removed the music or replaced it with, you know, more generic music or something I, I don't even remember what happened but it's back in stores now um, but yeah so um, yeah that, like that stuff happens and so I can understand that Twitch probably just had the thing where they had it for until the end of the year it would have renegotiated if Twitch things had I don't know performed the way they expected or if they hadn't changed plans or whatever what, uh, whatever happened um, and I don't really know, you know, what they expected and what happened. Um, so yeah, it would be interesting to to find out about that. Um, okay, let's go with. Uh, um, if you play your own instruments and sing with your own voice, it's okay on Twitch. I think you think you heard me say. Um, yeah, I, I looked up the terms of Twitch for music and there, oddly, which is surprising for me because like what I know is lyrics are, you know, poetry and that has copyright, you know, like other writing, um, like creative writing. Uh, a while ago, a friend of mine uh, found out that, uh, you know, technical writing isn't really protected because it's not considered creative so if you just write technical documentation apparently it's hard to get someone who copies it to do that um, then uh, uh, to, to you know like be made to stop that which is kind of mean um, uh, but so and compositions so melodies have a separate copyright on them as well which you know makes sense because sometimes for example someone writes a new text on an old melody and then, of course, um, the composer, you know, has to get their copyright honored as well. Um, and, um, of course, a performance has copyright as well. You know, like you can hire a band, and but they have to give you the right to take the music they made, even if it's from your composition. Um, they have like you have to pay them for the performance and usually with that you get the right to use that performance um, if you write your contact contract right um, and so that also means of course that like in a computer game there's a social certain part percentage of the price that goes for the music like for the orchestra they hire or for the you know like uh, uh, electro music uh, editor that that mixes the producer um that mixes the 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 midi songs or whatever you know and the composer and any singers and things like that um so by that measure it shouldn't be allowed to do music on twitch but twitch uh help explicitly states among the things that are permitted and not permitted regarding music that um you may play music and now keep this in mind i'm not a lawyer okay so i might be slightly misreading this but what it says is it basically states all these terms for um video on demand so for the recordings of a stream but it says during a live stream um you can play someone else's compositions with their lyrics but they say something like you have to make a good faith effort to perform it as it was intended or something which is a little weird it sounds like oh you're not allowed to do parodies or or make fun of them i don't know so that seems a little weird um 
but anyway, in there they say that's okay for the live stream. So I don't know if that's like a a provision that they ha had put in there, you know, because it just happens that you go, in, you know, like say, uh, like make fun of something and, you know, like say, hey, uh, I don't know, your character gets knocked out and you go like, ooh, I see the stars or whatever. I don't know. Like sing some existing song. Um, so it's weird that um, Twitch Sings actually um, permits singing someone else's songs live, but you have to do the singing and all the instruments yourself or with uh, instruments that you have a right to use. So like if I play it on a piano or on a MIDI keyboard, it's okay. If I get a friend to record it and give me a slip of paper that says, yes, you're allowed to use this music, this background music on your stream, I can sing to that. That's fine as well. Or on the other hand, if I have a friend who is a good singer, I can get them and play the instruments to it myself or something if I'm able to do that. So apparently that is permitted as long as you don't keep a video of it. Um, and apparently that's kind of the distinction, you know, that I guess, like my guess right now is that comes from, you know, like, uh, uh, what they're called? Punters? Like street musicians? Um, where, you know, they're allowed to just stand at the corner of the street and perform songs and people pay them for it. And that's fine. But of course, if you make a recording and then start selling them, buskers, thank you, that was it. Yeah, thank you, Lucius. Uh, and Ada. Um, so close. Um, uh, anyway, yeah. Um, so that is kind of my guess that that's why it's permitted live on Twitch. Because, you know, street musicians would be allowed and you're not making endless money with it. But if you... And, you know, it's a limited audience, probably. It might be connected to that, but I don't really know. Is that still something I'm, I'm kind of uh, looking to look into more closely? Um, so app apparently there is, like, something called a mechanical license that someone pointed out to me that might be what I want to look into to find out why this exactly works. So, yeah, so performance rights are different from mechanical reproduction rights. Yeah, that's... Uh, that sounds right, Lucius, yeah. Um, and yeah, so so that's kind of what makes it interesting, but also a little hard to to get around to. Um, and Link asks, will I continue singing karaoke after Twitch Sings closes? That is a good question that I haven't really answered. Um, uh, like, for myself. Um, I would love to. Um... There are, like, I heard on uh, Chantry Ray's stream. Let me just give her a shout out. Um, so um, that's a streamer who does, uh, basically, does Twitch things. Sometimes she, which is funny, sometimes she plays games on the side. And um, so she mentioned a service called Smule, I think it was called. S-M-U-L-E. Um, and it's basically a mobile app that is kind of like Twitch Sings, but you pay for some things. Like if you think if you start a new do it, you need a VIP account. Um, something like that. Um, to be able to upload it. Something like that. I didn't, uh, haven't really had the time to look into that either. Um, but so it's it's only a mobile app for one, and um, that of course limits like how you can like what sound hardware you can use. Um, so I'll be looking into that and any other karaoke apps I hear about, and maybe do something like that. But the problem is it will be problematic to stream that stuff because if I used one of these karaoke apps, I wouldn't technically you know those are the the backing music in those apps is usually licensed for, you know, I and every player of the app, every player of the game is allowed to themselves listen to the music. That's what the license is, but they're not allowed to broadcast it. And so, um, 
You'd have to use your phone microphone to sing. Yeah, basically the like the the headset microphone or something probably. I guess you could plug something into that, but uh, you know how it is. It's not really. Um, it's not really that easy. Um, of course, the the advantage is with Apple switching to ARM Max around the end of the year. I might be able to run that app on my Mac and then actually use my, um, like use the iPhone app and run it on my Mac and plug in proper microphones into the Mac. Um, so that might not be as bad, but like it's all kind of, uh, um, yeah, not super easy. And still I wouldn't be able to stream that because I don't have broadcast rights for the music. And so, um, yeah, that's always a bit of... Uh, uh, so, so it's all things I'm still looking into. I would love to continue, you know, doing something like Twitch Sync streams. Um, but at the least, um, I'll probably check out this app and then at least have something where I can, you know, like in the evening after work, uh, record some songs for myself and have other people sing back at me that way. Um, and there are other similar apps. Um, what else do we have? Performance rights are different from mechanical reproduction rights. They're really complicated and vary between countries. Um, yeah, that's also like there. While copyright in general is um, standardized, like through the, I think it's the Geneva Convention or some copyright thing that is. Uh, was also done in Geneva, I don't remember. Um, something with Geneva it was. Um, anyway, um, so um, while copyright in general is standardized these days, there are a lot of the details that are different, especially with regard to exceptions. For example, here in German, uh, we do not have the fair use concept that exists in the US. So in the US there is the concept of, well, if I'm just, you know, like uh, uh, walking around and singing it or something, that's fair use, or if I'm just using it for illustrative purposes. And in Germany that's handled in a different way. So there are a lot of details where you can run a file where in Germany it's permitted but not in the US, or the other way around it's permitted in the US but not in Germany. And of course for an international service like Twitch, um, that doesn't make it easier. Um, so yeah, um, so there's a, a lot of stuff to look into that if you don't have something like Twitch Sings that has been worked out for, um, you know, all the countries that Twitch broadcasts to. Um, is this the same Smule that made the IMT Pain app? I have no idea. Um, use your high-end Mac as a large phone. Brilliant. The circle is closing. Well, it would be, uh, it would probably be more of a low-end Mac. I don't know because it would be whatever first ARM model Apple announce um, by end of year, which so far as the rumors go, and which I actually hope will be some small like MacBook, MacBook Air slash MacBook nothing machine, not a MacBook Pro, um, at least those are the rumors right now and that kind of seems like the obvious choice because basically what Apple are doing is building bigger versions of their phone CPUs and so um, that of course means they won't start with their most high-end Mac to begin with because all those phone CPUs have been optimized to be power saving um, and you know fast per unit of power used but of course when they had to compromise between uh, use a lot of power uh, use a little more power or uh, have a little bit more performance they usually went with well uh, save the power um, and so um, like a MacBook is a fairly you know it has a fairly small screen compared to what you can attach to other Macs um, you know, it's also power saving, so the, the previous ones are comparatively slow. You know, they have like, uh, like a while ago they had like, 
Core M processors, so like really lightweight Ultrabook Intel processors, um, not you know like Xeon or um, uh, i7s or something like that um, in them, and so they're. Um, they were a lot slower when they were Intel, so people who buy a new ARM Mac and get the first batch of, you know, beefed up mobile CPUs will not miss much performance-wise. Or actually we'll see it as an improvement performance-wise, because like most iPhones these days performance-wise can keep up with those machines well. In fact, if you look into the current like for example the MacBook or MacBook Air, it's usually the actual main board is so small, um, like about the size of an iPhone main board. And the rest of the case is just filled with battery. Um, <coughs> and so, um, yeah, that's basically, um, so basically, that would be the low-hanging fruit for Apple, would be to first release the smaller, slower machines in updated versions with their new CPUs. Um, and as they, you know, like, beef them up and, like, build ones with more cores or something that, that are more significantly different from their mobile CPUs, um, and, you know, like, build especially bigger graphics cards, which the phones don't have, usually... You know, the phone has to drive the phone's internal screen, which is, you know, like a high DPI screen, but that's it. Um, and maybe a projector or TV set plugged into it. So that external output is, I don't know what, full HD, 1080p, probably. So that's as many pixels as it has to be able to work with. And the phones are single tasking, sort of, like, but at least the users don't start that many things that run simultaneously. Whereas on a desktop computer, usually you have a lot of things running simultaneously and overlapping windows showing, you know, doing different things. So the graphics card is like, needs to be beefed up more. And if you then released a Mac Pro right away, then uh, most people would go like, well, it, it gets really slow when, when I plug in two 4K screens or something like that, you know? So totally understandable that, um, or at least that's the expectation I have, and many people seem to have, that they will go with the uh, smaller models, and that gives them time to, you know, slowly build bigger CPUs each time round, and then release another faster, bigger, more powerful machine. Um, Twitch probably has a hard time managing something complex as literally international busking. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's actually the perfect description for it because, you know, it's even, you have the tip jar, um, you are playing music for people who might just be passing by, checking in, going, I'm not interested, or might be stopping by for once, or might, you know, return to that spot at the corner um, every week because they know you're there, or something like that. And some people even start selling albums or something out of the guitar case. Um... <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm not really sure um, how far I'll go with uh, um, with future karaoke stuff or something. I hope I can do something. I'll look into it, but so far haven't found anything yet. Also, um, I have been looking a little bit into what other kinds of music I could make, but not playing any instruments. I'm kind of limited. And um, I've tried out some open source, like, live looping software, and it's unusable. So uh, unless uh, I check out a few others and they're actually, you know, I actually understand how to use them, or someone gives me a recommendation for one that works really well, um, you know, that might not be an option either. Um, you think it's like Twitch has this app that isn't making that much money and it's not worth it to keep it going. Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of it because, like, that's also what I kind of, like, what surprised me. But I guess, um, you know, Twitch probably hoped for something more. 
um, that um, they have they made Twitch Sings a game, um, and they made it, you know, free. So it drove people to try out Twitch and to you know actually use their Twitch accounts to post something and whatever. Um, so we kind of got more engagement. Um, it's like some of. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so Twitch made um, made that app, and I kind of like would have thought, you know, like why, like uh, given like I, I looked up on w Wikipedia, and Harmonix is the company that actually made Twitch things for Twitch, and um, I think they make other uh, apps like that as well. And of course, that means you know Twitch has the running costs of getting a license for all this, this music, and. Um, They made a whole bunch of... I, I'm not 100% sure if it was Guitar Hero, but yeah, there were some well-known names on it. You should probably just uh, look up Harmonix on Wikipedia. There's like a table on there that has like every app they've released with like release year and like the third or fourth from the bottom or something with Twitch things. Um, and I remember having heard that before. Rock bands and Dance Central. Okay, they, they made all of them. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I knew, like, I remembered it was some names I had heard, and, um, you know, it was successful games, and they have seemed to have had a history, so they probably just, you know, took some of their code, remixed it a little. Um, yeah, pretty much every popular game that involves commercial music licensing, lol. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe it's related to that, you know, maybe they went and said, hey, we already have this license. Probably the music licensing that's hard. Yeah, it definitely is. Like music, like licensing in general is always a, a complication. Like for games and for, like unless you have it tailor made for your game and you know pay the composer a little more um, or find an unknown composer that kind of will uh, you know let you hire them for less money because they're unproven. So you're taking a bit of a risk and uh, also. You know, like, um, they kind of hope for, you know, what they call exposure. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it uh, could be related to um, uh, then, you know, like, if you do that, then you can get a, if you have your own music made, then you can usually get a contract for a little more money that says, hey, I'm going to get the right to relicense it or something like that or, and to... You know, like, for example, in included with that game with a one-time payment or something, and you don't pay royalties. Um, uh, yeah. um, so that's, um, that's definitely the hard part otherwise. Um, you think most people don't realize how hard music licensing is, you get the impression that most of the discussion on Twitch sings is pretty ignorant of music licensing. Yeah, yeah, I I don't know, I haven't really heard that much Twitch Things discussion that went into anything in any detail for me to tell either way. But yeah, in general, like also if you hear like people on Twitch Things streams say what they want to do next, many people seem to be going by the maxim oh if twitch doesn't mute my audio i'm legally fine and the problem is that's not it the audio muting is an automated system so it gets stuff wrong it is over eager to some music where you sound too much like a you know a commercial piece of music that someone has the rights for or in the other on the other hand you know they will not catch you you know like as a obvious example um, will not catch you reading a book um, that um, you know someone else wrote because it's you reading it but the other author actually has the right to decide who will do the audiobook version and how it will get published otherwise you know just anyone could make an audiobook version and just make money without having to invest much prior um, 
and uh, you know nobody would buy the book because hey I've already heard it um, you know so like in general licensing of uh, art I guess in, in a vague sense is, is quite a complicated topic even down to you know like where do you draw the line and they've you know we've spent decades in different countries drawing the lines and some countries have them slightly different um so yeah, it's uh, it's not an easy thing. Um, yeah. And I mean, you notice it like when I played Spider-Man, the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game, here um, on Twitch, I actually had to turn off the game music because it got muted because Apparently, I don't know if it was, you know, like a misrecognition or if it actually was that certain uh, pieces in the game were actually ta music taken from the movies. And so it just said, well, you're playing this movie's soundtrack that's copyrighted. Poof, you're not allowed to. Whereas in general on Twitch, um, the manufacturers of games give you permission to stream it and these days yeah you probably wouldn't try to do anything involving commercially licensed music in the future after twitch sync shuts down yeah i would like for me um yeah that's kind of that's why i looked into live looping because you know like i can sort of sing and you know i could try to you know just you know like sing the different tracks and put them over each other i did that as a kid with the tape recorder you know just uh like pretend to be a whole chorus of different people and then you know record it on one tape and then while playing back one tape i uh, sang into the microphone and so i had me singing a duet with myself and i did that a couple times back and forth and the audio quality went horribly down of course because analog copying always like gets more background noise and things like that but um, that's what I basically did. So I sang, sang like a whole chorus um, with myself. Um, and I was thinking, you know, like I could kind of do like some a cappella style stuff or something and maybe put a beat behind it. But um, like the, the problem is, of course, you have to find an app that is easy to use. And most music applications kind of... Um, <laughs> assume a basic level of you know like music jargon skills that I simply don't have like you know like I I don't really the concept of a bar like I know it exists and I have a vague idea what it is but not enough to actually make the decision of like should I do this in like four quarters or four eighths or whatever you know I just sing a melody and like find a beat somewhere that I hit to it and I don't know like which after how many beats would be the next bar I don't know I just do it by you know gut feeling and so uh, most of these music apps when they're not designed you know to be you know like I'm recording my guitar track and then someone else is recording their singing track over it they're not intended for live performances and so of course they would be kind of boring on stream and live loops are kind of interesting on stream because you can go like you can go do, 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 or something you know and record that short bit and then just loop it and start it playing and then you know like sing a little bit into it and then record that and loop it every you know like every eight bars or whatever to use a measurement i have no idea what it is um <laughs> and then you know like you can just combine that stuff and it'll build up and then you can slowly turn them off again and get a wind down and you have something that sounds like a song and that makes it interesting especially because you can see someone layering up the song um, so I thought you know that that's about just about close enough to my my small skill set that I might be able to do that but only if I find some sort of app and I'm not really looking thinking uh, I could uh, write uh, music playback app at least my past experiences with uh, Apple's uh, music APIs have been well they're like for doing stuff like that they're usually very low level um, and so it would be um, 
uh, it's it's very finicky and very annoying. Like pausing, I had to implement pausing once of a core audio um, player, and basically the the answer I got from like the official answer I got from Apple is well, pausing is an advanced feature, which means it doesn't support pausing. Uh, they expect you to just you know feed it silent audio when you want it to be paused, and then yourself feed it the audio that you want later and things like that and so it was really um and the documentation wasn't very good and the documentation hasn't gotten better um oh i think lucius said something about uh you said something about your own apps somewhere what was that? I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Twitch Sync seems to have only a few thousand active users. Compare that to games with 100 times the viewers and players. Yeah, yeah, that might also be uh, part of it. Yeah, maybe they just hope for more people to get into it and it wasn't enough. Mm, where was it? Ah, it's like some of your apps in the App Store that make about $10 per month. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's just some... Um, you know, the problem is, of course, if you only sell that many copies of an app, then that means that money um, has to be in relation to um, to what time you invest into actually continuing to develop that app. And of course, that becomes a vicious circle because that means if an app sales drop, then people will save, see fewer and smaller updates and just, you know, like the fixes will use up the time you need to make that app um, to, you know, like the time you can spend on that app and you might have to focus on another app that just gives you better, um, you know, gives you better, better return on investment because, you know, you don't want to be not updating the bigger app and then lose those customers as well and then you can't pay the rent. So it totally makes sense. Um, that Twitch might just have looked at the bottom line and gone like, well, we expected, I don't know, twice as many users or, you know, 10 times as many viewers or something like that. And that didn't work out. And then, yeah. Um, yeah, Core Audio is very low level. You have your own Objective C++ code to talk to Core Audio. That was about how many of your apps make little money in the App Store. Is it worth keeping it in? Revenue often has little relation to how much work you put into a particular app. Ah, yeah, that was about... Yeah, the, the message I looked back was about how many of your apps make little money in the App Store. Is it worth, worth keeping it in? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, as long as the app works, you know, you can kind of... Like, that's where different companies also differ in, like, how they decide. Some go, like, if an app is not actively growing, they will shut it down because they go, if someone now buys the app and I have to shut it down in, you know, a month, they will be annoyed with me and I will have to give them the money back. So to save me that hassle, I close that app down right now. And then, you know, just take it from sale and people who had it will still be able to get it and I won't really miss the 10 bucks or what a month. Um, but there are other people who just go, well, as long as people are still buying the app and are happy with the features, I'll leave it in because obviously it's still of use to someone. And then at some point Apple comes and says, well, you need to make these five dozen changes for it to work on the new machines. And then you say, well, okay, um, I'm not making enough money to warrant all that work. And so you say, okay, this is end of life for the app. Um, the revenue often has little relation to how much work you put into a particular app. 
yeah, it's kind of, uh, of course there is, you know, like an upfront investment that you make, but, um, but, yeah. You got the email from Apple for two of your apps saying they need to be updated recently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember we had, like, I think the most recent thing we had was where we found some, where I think, like, they, they replaced the web view with something new, and so we had to um, do some unplanned updates to get the web views updated to the new version, which is more complicated because everything works differently. Um, anyway, I don't think uh, this <laughs> Sam and Max stream might not be... Like, I like nerding out and things, so that's fine, but like I, I don't want to go into implementation details of WebView versus WK WebView in Apple's APIs <laughs> on this stream, in the Sam and Max stream. I would save that for a programming stream, I guess. Um, you hadn't updated them in two years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but anyway, so yeah, I'm so I'm kind of looking whether there's any decent live looping software. I wouldn't mind if it's for Windows either, because like most of my streaming and gaming, you know, stuff is games. So I'm streaming from Windows PCs anyway, um, and I think especially music stuff these days, most people buy the the Windows stuff anyway. So there will probably be a better selection for that. Um, although I was surprised that most of the open source stuff I tried out so far also had Mac versions, so that's nice. I always like to have the choice, you know, because I have both operating systems and like both of them. Um, it's always nice when I can go, for example, I recently bought two copies of, the dra of a drawing app, um, the Windows one and the Mac one, simply for the reason that, you know, like I want to do some drawing on stream um, and that would happen on the Windows PC and currently my graphics tablet is connected to the Windows PC as the second display because I've used, the other display I would have used uh, is in use on my work from home setup. Um, but then I also, like when I travel or something, if I take my MacBook with me, I want to be able to say, oh, I made this drawing recently with my tablet on the PC, um, and I want to edit it a little bit or, you know, place it into something else. And so, of course, uh, I wanted both versions. Um, so it's always nice to have that choice to go on both platforms because they all have their advantages. Um, and it's just more convenient if you can use them, you know, if you can you do certain things on anyone. Also, you know, should, for example, I don't know, Apple go broke or whatever, it is nice to kind of know, okay, these important software pieces that I have, I can actually run on Windows as well. So that's nice. Yeah, yeah but so, uh, <laughs> long story short, uh, we are nerds, we like to program, we like to music, although I'm not very good at music, um, beyond being able to sing a little bit. Um, and so I will look into, maybe I can make Twitch Sings, uh, find a replacement for Twitch Sings, or find something, you know, that will keep me legally in the clear, allowing me to at least, you know, do like live streams and do or at least do duets, you know, off stream to at least have that fun again. And I would love if if any of you finds, you know, even if it's an off stream thing for karaoke, for, uh, you know, socially networked karaoke like Twitch Sings um, and gets into that, let me know, then I, I can, you know, I, I would probably be interested in hanging out with some of those people. Um, and you know, even if you end up having like three karaoke apps because you know, like your circle of friends split up into three, um, that probably means that some of them will have different music licenses and that in turn will mean um, I get to sing more songs. So that's fine as well. Um, so yeah, but of course it, it sucks that they closed down uh, Twitch Sings uh, or that they will be closing down and I hope to be singing some stuff. Which I li what I like is that they uh, released the 400 songs they had on Backburner. 
Um, I don't know exactly how that happens, that you have 400 songs sitting there, you know, did they just, like, did the company, you know, was the, were they just contracted to release 400 songs and they said, okay, we're going to release this many songs every this many months? And then they sent, uh, said, okay, when we have to announce it, we'll just release the rest instead of keeping them into the next year or something? Or was it more that they had planned some larger dumps and just merged them? You know, it could have been that they just went, well, we have... How do you find those 400 songs? I see a date added. Yeah, exactly. You go into all songs and in that little pop-up, there's a date added sele selection. And then you can... They're not in any particular order, which doesn't make it that easy. Um, but there's a, l a lot of great songs in there. Um, like, my most recent songs were basically all from that list. Um, so, yeah. That's nice. At least that that option was already in there and uh, was usable. So you can actually see which songs you've never seen compared to oh, I just missed that song looking through, or I haven't sang that song in a while. Um, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, it was a fun fun thing and a nice thing. And I'll, I'll miss, uh, you know, doing that. And uh, also, uh, the parties were kind of nice. But, I mean, we still have, um, uh, well, almost three months. Um, so enjoy that um, while you can and if you haven't tried out Twitch Sings it's not too late you know it's just it's a free app you can download it from Mac and Windows um, just get it start it up connect your Twitch account and you know uh, sing half of a duet with someone else o upload it as open so someone else can sing the other half with you again and continue on from there and have some fun just have fun making music with other people. The parties are fun. You were one about six hours last night. Oh, yeah. They tend to run a little long if you do the parties. So the what I didn't really know, because uh, usually when I um, ended up in parties, it was usually, you know, someone who was already affiliated just going, hey, I'm doing a party. And so it was for me, it was just, oh, there's the party in the list. Click join and you're in and you're singing with them. Um, but what I didn't know is you actually need to be affiliated or partner um, to start a party, apparently. And I thought just anyone could start a party. Um, and, you know, parties are, it's, it's a pretty simple thing just to, to explain that. Um, so Twitch Sings parties are basically a group voice chat where one people gets a little microphone symbol. So it's like a, you know, handing around the microphone and only the person with the microphone can actually start doing a song, a karaoke song with Twitch Sings. And so everyone else can like browse the, browse the library and get ready for uh, when they have to sing. And then at some point, like the person with the microphone will, you know, click a song, say start singing, and then everyone gets that song on their display. And they can, you know, listen, um, listen into it and kind of, and, and that's what you do. You kind of take turns singing songs and in between chat with each other. And it's a fun way um, of doing a game like that. Uh, yeah, that's why you set a goal to become affiliate to start a party. You realize that during a song, all the other people in the party can talk, but their audio doesn't get recorded in the saved video. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, th th that's good, actually. It, I like that. I mean, it makes sense, you know, because of the, the transmission delay. You cannot sing along with each other live over the internet. Because, like, there is a delay for audio to make it to the other person and come back. And usually in conversations you only notice it by people, you know, interrupting you or something like that, which is, you know, where they uh, haven't heard you start speaking yet and so think you're done and then start speaking themselves and only then hear you speaking. Um, 
And so, uh, um, yeah. So um, that they wouldn't record it in the duet kind of makes sense because there's no way you can uh, anything you say will not be in time with the recording, which is why you know Twitch sings duets are actually asynchronous. Someone records one half, uploads it, and someone else plays back that half on their system and sings to it, and then it gets combined at the end. Um, and that means you don't. The transition delay of the first part is basically front loaded. Um, so that's a nice workaround. My nose is itching. I'm sorry. Um, so you started having fun with trying to make each other giggle or mess up during the song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we didn't really know that, so we generally just muted uh, ourselves so we wouldn't screw up the other person's recording. Um, but, yeah, like, we occasionally would do some, you know, like, uh, when there was, like, a long, you know, like, ten bars break or something, then someone would, like, make a funny comment in between or something. Um, yeah. Life to it's are impossible with that delay. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's, you know, that's basically, that's just how the internet works. Even the fastest internet will have a slight delay, and that's probably a killer for music. Just, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever, if any of you have ever been in a big, like, a church is a good example. Um, you know, sound is something really slow. Um, which means that if you're in a big church, Usually the organ is at the back doing the you know accompaniment, the instruments, and the priest is at the front with a microphone that is connected so you know everyone even in the back rows can hear them. And so um, by the time the sound from the organ has reached the priest, that's actually such a noticeable delay that uh, when the priest then sings, it will be delayed for everyone um, in the back rows, you know. Even though, you know, like, microphone sound goes to the speakers basically in speed of light, electrons, electric power. Um, so, um, if you're sitting there, you will always hear, you know, like some people singing too fast because they, they focus on... Um, how the organ plays, others will be too slow because they focus on what they hear from the priest and, you know, will slow themselves down to match whatever the priest sings. Um, so it's, it's basically impossible to properly sing in a big building together already. And so even though, you know, like internet in general is, you know, speed of light going through cables, the cables are long enough and the data, you know, needs to be compressed and is kind of serialized. So it, it, it is slowed down again, basically just by how we transfer stuff through wires um, for, you know, digital. Because there's, it's not only your audio going through that one line via the internet. It's like everyone's in the street and then everyone's in that half of the city and things like that. So there are some delays when they kind of like... Uh, you know, like feather in, like, you know, your audio is here, someone else's is here, and that means your audio takes longer, absolute time. Um, see that? Yeah. Um, so kind of like that. So it's difficult, um, even in real life, and internet kind of has that delay just built in. And unless they find, like, a way to make really, really, really fast internet, or you have an exclusive line, then you probably won't, uh, won't be able to do live music. Which is why, actually, um, like, you see that in some movies where uh, there is a composer in, I don't know, Berlin, and the orchestra is, is in Prague, um, you know, and because, you know, like, hiring a lot of people in Prague is cheaper because wages are lower there, and um, but it's still EU, so you're kind of safe, and then they, they have that big name composer in Berlin, and then they have a, a video phone connection, basically, and that was usually ISDN, which is 
like basically an exclusive line, not like or used to be like an exclusive line. Um, because basically these days you do not get an exclusive line unless you pay a lot and lot of money. And usually before that, you know, telephone worked that way. And so you could do, you could actually conduct an orchestra with this exclusive line because it was just fast enough. Um, dedicated circuit instead of packet switched. Exactly, yeah, it's not, not everyone sharing line you know where you have to wait for someone else's packet before your next packet can come in and so on but it's actually um okay that was a little off screen but never mind <laughs> um but yeah it's like you you actually had the whole line for yourself and, and that way it worked and i think they probably still do that for movies but it costs a lot of money i mean it probably and and telephone used to be that way on the other hand, that only works for certain distances. Most of the delay is buffering to deal with packet loss and packet out of order. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, that was before everybody and their brothers and their brothers' kids joined Zoom calls five times a day. That too. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's. I mean these days it, it was even before Zoom calls. You know, it was. Um, uh, um, y you don't have to wait for Zoom calls to that to become a problem. Um, because even before that, you know, you had uh, YouTube, for instance. And so that meant, like, the pipes were full with people getting movies from YouTube or watching something on Twitch or whatever, you know. Um, and that already took some time out of it. And before that, of course, the pipes just were smaller. Oh, the times when you had a physical copper loop between telephones. Yeah, exactly, that was like... And funny thing, though, is that even... I don't know if that was because they were using more modern technology or whether they were using satellites, but I remember once we did... We got a phone call from for friends who were in China. It was a very short one, of course, because long-distance calls were very, very expensive back then. But, um, like, every time you said something, it took a while... And then you heard a silent echo of your voice, like, in the distance. Then you heard silently their reply, and only then you would hear their reply. Or I'm not even sure if you heard their reply silently, but, but then it took another delay until you got their reply. Um, and so there was... Um, so, so, yeah, th there were delays even in real phone lines because you know the line to china was just so long that it took a while for stuff to transmit because like i think i think i lied a little bit i think uh i think electricity is not like when it goes through wire is not really speed of light but like it's it's damn fast and i think faster than sound but not I don't think it's light speed, basically. I think it's it was slower or something. I don't know. It's uh, physics and, and stuff. And that's about where I check out. Um, I, I I heard most of those things as like short explanations for like why these phenomena happened. Um, so yeah, um, slightly different. Um, back then, but even then it took a while for sound to travel through the phone lines. Um, and you know, it's it's fine, it's still faster than walking over to that person and telling it to them. Geostationary satellites take about 540 milliseconds round trip from Earth. That's half a second. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. I remember uh, we had... Um, like, we had a stereo that had a satellite radio and a regular over-the-air radio. Back at the time when, you know, it was analog over-the-air radio and basically everything had been built for over-the-air radio initially. And then they would also transmit their radio signal to the satellites, which was usually, you know, usually they, they fed it into some sort of cable 
to someone who would then feed it into the satellites. And I just remember there was a noticeable delay if you like switch back and forth the same station between satellite radio and regular radio, you were actually like a second or something behind. Like it was noticeable. Um, and there's a, a lot of stuff these days that goes over satellite as well. Um, yeah. Fun stuff, all that. Um, modern and old technology and when modern technology runs via old technology and things. When which one is better or slower or better for the general case but actually in the absolute slower or something like that. There's a place. You know, like the whole idea of having, you know, direct connected phone lines, of course, was also that, you know, it's kind of more... Um, safer, secure, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking and trying to think of a better word. Um, you know, it's... Um, you know, for example, for like emergency calls or something, you can actually trace a, a phone call fairly easily compared to just some random packets that came over the internet. Because, you know, two of your... You know, like you're breathing in and you're breathing out um, uh, might be sent as two separate packets over the internet and may go completely different routes and then arrive, one might arrive, the second one might arrive faster than the first one and things like that. You know, because just some, some nodes will just say, hey, uh, I'm not taking any calls right now, I'm saturated or something, and then they'll go, okay, we, we won't use this route for the second packet, we'll use the other one, and things like that. There's a lot of, you know, dynamic adaptation, and things like that in your internet. Um, not 100% sure how... Like, I know the routes are in general dynamic, so that if one computer goes down, you'll kind of try to talk to one, and will say, no, I can't, and then it will go to the other one. I don't know if that actually, if they actually, like, sign off with the... Uh, with some earlier point, and so you will re get redirected earlier. I, I guess it must be really would kind of be wasteful to just go. Hey, I'll just get that route every morning at ten, and then afterwards you'll just have to try. And only if you realize that that route is garbage, you'll take the next best one. Who knows? But yeah. So anyway, long story short, uh, yeah, still looking for a new Twitch sings. <laughs> Long story short, for the second time. You give tokens to first-time customers? That's right. Go on, enjoy, live a little. It just seems like bad business sense. Okay, tell you what. 13 hours from now, when you're trying to pawn your little friend here to pay off the VIG, we can talk then about bad business sense. Okay, we'll come back then. <laughs> I hear you have a mole problem. Hey, it's a genetic condition. You should have seen my father's back. <laughs> Holy cow, I'm actually being too subtle. First time that's ever happened. Maybe I should just stick to the code phrase. Does the carpet match the drapes? If Don Teddy Bear says so, they do. Don Teddy Bear? I thought this place was mafia free. That's right, kiddies. 100% mafia free. No mafia anyways. Come on, true. On the Wackerat in the background, are those two zeros or two eyes? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I always took it as eyes. I guess we'll have to get closer and see. Yeah, I guess it could just be a funny font with two zeros. Good question. I, I guess it's probably the numbers. Something has to display when you play it, I guess. How many you got. We're looking for somebody who works here. Look, I just greet the guests. You want to know who works here? Talk to Don Ted E. Bear. He's in charge. Where's the Don? He's got uh, business in the back room. You know what I mean? What kind of business? Yeah, the kind of business that gets said like it's got quote marks around it, so's you know not to ask. 
Thanks, Levy Bear. Enjoy, and remember, if you're not losing, we're not winning. Hmm. Yeah, the new hot thing is low Earth orbit comms sat satellites like Starlink. Oh yeah, I, th I think I mainly heard about Starlink from uh, uh, from all the astronomers yelling uh, because apparently they're so low orbit that they reflect light. So you bas basically have a whole collection of thousands of shooting stars in the sky, lighting it up and make it impossible to see the stars outside. Look, Max, it's a beloved carnival game with a delightful mobster twist. What better way to relax than by offing fake rodents in the most violent way imaginable? No, please supply your own firearm. We always do. Insert token to play. Okay. Let's give this that. a shot. <laughs> I'm in pain. These rats are gonna pop up, see? If the rat keeping his mouth shut, you don't touch him. But if that rat singing, you put a bullet in his head, Cappy! Uh -oh. How can we not? Switch game. Okay, it's like mom used to say, blowing away rats is its own reward. A wise woman. Interesting. Okay. I guess. the rat. Insert token to play. Oops. Nah, I guess. I may need them for the casino games. Let's play again. Now, whoops. The orange ones are the ones to shoot for. That was a bit hard at the start. You loop. Again, again. Hmm. I wonder if uh, you know you can. You have to do all of them, or what? Or if there's a trick. Should have become a mafia hitman. <laughs> Look, there's the prize. As advertised, it's an almost entirely worthless teddy bear refrigerator magnet. Hey, let's find someone with a metal plate in their skull and redecorate their forehead. Oh, Max, you really know how to find the bright side of everything, don't you? Yes, I do. Now let's go shoot something. Yay! I won something. I bet the game is cheesing me. <laughs> But yeah, you really had to shoot all of them. I mean, it's not impossible to play, but um, I remember this taking me a lot longer when I first played it. This would probably be a lot easier if you played it on iPad, though, because then you can just touch, 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 touch. I, I did that with uh, Plants vs. Zombies, like on PC, that was kind of, uh, you know, stressful because the mouse actually has to be shifted around to get to each spot. But like on the pad, you pretty much, it's just your hand, it's much less weight to, to, to transport. These rats are gonna pop up, see? If the rat's keeping his mouth shut, you don't touch him. But if that rat's singing, you put a bullet in his head, cause a mistrial, and win a souvenir magnet. Awesome mistrial. <laughs> okay, the trash can is not interactable. Hello, M -A -F -I -A, oh baby. Welcome, welcome, generous friend. Days and weeks and tokens to spend. We're just regular businessmen. Just you and me and Teddy Bear. 
catchy tune. Just use a mini teddy bear. It's because of my recently acquired lead Overwatch skills. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of thinking that, you know, since I've used this mouse for for a lot um, of games and, you know, are used to, like, its weight and have, you know, enough room and have... Luckily, my cup was empty. Um, all right. Um, that uh, that actually is uh, surprisingly true that, you, you know, I might not... I, I wouldn't call them elite Overwatch skills, but, uh, you know... Um, it's still, uh, you know, it, it served as training. Losing at Overwatch uh, served as training for uh, playing that whack to rats today. Okay, let's talk to this guy and see what that game is about, I guess. Hello there, freaky bearhead wearing card dealer. Hello, I'm Cuddly Bear. Wanna play cards? Does the carpet match the drapes? Wanna play cards? We asked first! Wanna play cards? Hmm. Does he have an Australian accent? That was surprising for a mafia guy. We'd like to develop a gambling addiction, starting now. Well, what do we have here? I'd say the circus was in town. But I know for a fact they won't be here till next Friday. So you must be here to play cards. Depends. Who are we playing? The name's Steak Charm. Leonard Steak Charm. And let's just say I didn't rack up 10 million tokens by getting lucky. <laughs> How'd you get them then? By cheating? Look, Rabbit, Leonard Steak Charm is no cheat. He's just that good. Okay, what's the game, Steak Charmer? Truest test of skill there is. Indian poker. How exactly does one play poker of the Indian persuasion? You know you're off to a good start when your opponent doesn't even know how to play. You ever consider that we might be card sharks? Or shark sharks? You know, the kind that eat people for being overconfident? Whatever. Look, it's simple. We both get dealt a card which we put on our forehead without looking at it. So we can see each other's card, but not our own. Pretty sharp, McGruff. Don't call me that. And you make a bet if you think you got the higher card. Or fold if you want out. That's it? Yep. And we see who's got the highest card, and then I win, like always. Well, when you put it like that, we'd be fools not to play. Hmm. Leonard Steak Charmer, huh? You don't look like a Leonard Steak Charmer. Oh, yeah? What do I look like? You look more like a uh, Boris Crinkle. That's what everyone says. <laughs> so are you a real Indian? Yeah. I'm a wooden Indian. As in, wouldn't bet against me if I was you. <laughs> Not yet. How do you get anyone to gamble with you? Frankly, you seem shady. I offer great odds, and I possess a certain subtle charm. I hate to break it to you, but non-existent and subtle are two different things. Maybe charm is a euphemism for gum disease. Look, I'm here to play poker. Are we gonna get this dog and bunny show on the road or what? Does the carpet match the drapes? No, it's stained with tobacco juice. Squalid, yet candid. Normally, I like that in a gambler. But for you, we'll make an exception. Hmm. Okay, let's we try this. Try our hand at a hand of Indian poker. You won't regret this, hon. By which I mean, I won't regret this. Oh, and try any funny stuff with your partner and I'll shoot you both. That seems fair. <laughs> I got 10 million tokens says I got a better card than you. I'm betting it all. Sweet second mortgages on a summer home. We can't match that. Tell you what, Pooch. I'm feeling so confident. I'll give you 10 million to one odds. Just bet one token and you can win the whole pot. Those are mighty good odds. No, they ain't, Deputy Dog. Because I never lose. 
<laughs> so, in or out? Sure, we'll bet a token. <laughs> Sorry, Rover. You lose. Stick Chama with. Mama was wrong. Gambling does pay. I'd say better luck next time. But it'll take more than luck to beat me. Yeah, it'd take a sturdy oaken staff to really do the job. Leonard, you give new meaning to the phrase, a face only a mother could love. My mama said I was beautiful. Uh... <laughs> That's enough for now. To him. Okay. Although I could have sworn you were a dog, not a chicken. A common mistake. Wondering if there's anything that is one shiny nose. Oh, oh this shiny is yours. Keep it up and you'll get a shiner too. Okay, so that did you see that? Shiny nose. He sees oh, his own face reflected in that Keep nose. It up and you'll get a shiner too. Wait, we have a playing card. Can we put that on there? <laughs> and now wow, it looks it sticks. Good. I was kind of thinking like he was staring over there, so that was probably supposed to be a hint. It's a rubber ducky ashtray. Leave it to the toy mafia to make smoking fun. Let's try that again Back and hope he has a higher card. Public humiliation? Just a little more. Deal. All right. I'm betting all ten million. You only gotta bet one. So, in or out? Sure, we'll bet a token. <laughs> Sorry, Fido. You lose. The dog win. What? I, you, you cheated me! What are you talking about, Leonard? How did we cheat? You... Pay up, stick charmer. Mama, why weren't you watching over me? I'm ruined. <laughs> Let's go, Max. Leonard and his dead mother need some alone time right now. Yeah, let's go see if we can play Whack the Rats 10 million times in a row without passing out. I don't know. Like, we had a few tokens already, so I don't know why we would need 10 million tokens. But oh! Did he say 10 million tokens? So that's probably what we need to give to uh, to Bosco. Leave it to the toy mafia to make smoking fun. Can we take it? Oh, one armed bandit. A one armed bandit. Insert token to play. You see that, Sam? It's a little play on the well-known colloquialism for slot machine. The fun just never stops at teddy bears. Well, let's go to Bosco Uppsala first and see if we can get that listening device. And then I explore here some more. Just because the number is the same. And maybe Bosco accepts those weird to tokens. After all, he, he did accept the food stamps. So let's hope. That's a important detail that they got right here, by the way. Um, in in like adventure games, you want that if you click at something and then click elsewhere, you see it cancelled my looking at the magazines and walked me here instead because that was my second click. 
So kind of you code it asynchronously. And it's really annoying if, for example, you know, like you want to walk over there and you actually, you know, click the camera and he talks about the camera. And you can't get out of there until it's done or something like that. We want to buy something. Oui, oui, monsieur. Give us the listening device. Okay, stinky pants. Here's your 10 million. By the sacred stench of St. Gainsbourg, these are not American dollars. No, but there are 10 million of them. Hmm. Well, the prizes at teddy bears can be quite useful. I accept. And in return, I give you the miniature listening device. This is a bug. Precisely. Does this thing really work? Does this thing really work? That answer your question. Now listen up, maggots. I am a bug. Drop me in enemy territory and I will get all the information you need. You just make sure to pick me up again and I will repeat every word. Every word! We'll be putting you in some situations that could be a mite precarious. Think you can handle it? I was a numb boy. You don't want to know what I've been through. They slaughtered ladybugs. Ladybugs! And that's not all. I've seen them kill. Larvae. Larvae! Huh? So yeah, I think I can handle it. Now I need some shut-eye before the mission. Put me in your pocket. In your pocket! Move, maggot! Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Aww. That's cool, and I like the, the military drum music to go with it. That was a nice touch. I, I really love these games, you know, they, they're, like, at the next seasons, there's some really good work. And they're, you know, they're kind of classic point-and-click adventures. But they've also modernized them a little, they simplified the interface. You know, it's not even verb coin. Like, you click at something and there's basically that one action you do. Or sometimes there's this... Choice. Where are we going, Sam? Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Goody! So I don't know what we'll need the listening device for, but I guess we will. Welcome to Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Step right up, kitties. We got fun and games. He's like one of those, uh, you know, like the, the, um, like the traveling rides or something where you, um, have like this guy at the microphone going like, And everybody please, uh, this ride now goes a second time. Go, keep going, have fun. You know, like that. It's even, even more bored than those. Teddy Bear's original meatball sandwich. Looks tasty! The original Teddy Bear made this original meatball sandwich with his own two paws in 1957. The microorganisms that give Teddy's modern meatballs their distinctive tang are descended from the colony in this sandwich. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing. So I guess we'll go steal those cards? Well, those are coasters, I guess. Okay. Guess we'll try the one on bandit. One on bandit. Uh, Insert yeah. token to play. So that's the weird thing. We have 10 million tokens, but then we also have tokens. Which is, I guess, the ones he gave us. So we, we have an undefined number of tokens. I mean, you know, I understand why they did that game mechanically, but it's kind of weird. How do you know that the next season will be good? Well, I might have played these games before a couple of years ago. Um, because, yeah, these, these games are pretty old. Um, well, pretty old is maybe saying too much. Um, let me just check when they're from. Sam and Max? Hello. 
So culture, this one is from 2006. And then they made more. 2007, 2008. I think we only have three se seasons, so that makes sense. So yeah, um, that's how I know. You bet these games are state-of-the-art 3D RTX Free World. Oh, 2006. Yeah. <laughs> I would like if some company went, you know, looked at how Telltale did these and said, come on, uh, we'll talk to Steve Purcell and get uh, another license and make another game. And if they, you know, like got some good writers, maybe even the ones who worked on these for Telltale back then or something like that, and uh, made some more games in that style. I mean, you can graphically do them a little better. I mean, this season is, I think, limited to 800 by 600. Or maybe it was... No, I think I, I got it up to 1024 by 768, but that's still not full HD. Um, so, yeah. But I guess on stream... Ten... Twelve eighty by seven twenty, I think, is what the stream is right now. Right, twelve eighty was the one I was missing. So um, that means uh, seven sixty eight. This, what you see, is actually just slightly scaled down, and that's why it actually looks a little smoother because the stream is actually lower resolution than what I usually play. The the YouTube. Oh, I'm. Remember what is Let me just check my settings for a moment. Streaming, recording. Oh yeah, so I'm Yeah, here I'm actually just streaming at 7 and recording at 720p, so not even the YouTube stream will be better. Which is fine, I guess, because at least you don't get weirdly upscaled. Usually, like, slightly unevenly downscaled usually still looks better than slightly unevenly upscaled, or even just upscaled, usually. Like, because, of course, upscaled cannot invent new pixels, really, so it can only try to duplicate certain ones, which usually looks chunkier or blurrier or worse, whereas with scaling down, you just have to leave out a few pixels and maybe interpolate with b between a few, which actually makes it look nicer on stream probably than it looks for me right now. Because, like, for example, on Sam's toe, you can kind of see that there's a little nick, like a little corner there where you see the edge of the model. So it's not actually a round foot, but it's a lot more subtle here because it's like one kind of smooth pixel that has been blurred in with the background for you. And for me on screen, I can actually see that pretty clearly. Let's talk to this guy, see what he has to do, because I Hold it, Mugs! Not Mugs, Max! I don't care if it's Teddy Ruxpin. No one gets in without a password. Oh, right. That would be what again? Why don't you tell me? It was worth a try. <laughs> Does the carpet match the drapes? I don't know. I set fire to the drapes. I love to watch things burn. Hey, me too! I'm sorry I asked. Alright, um... Let us in. Only Toy Mafia allowed in. Not that there's any Mafia here. Okay, we'd like to sign up for the Toy Mafia, please. Talk to Chuckles. He's the head of Mafia Admissions. Where's Chuckles? Right behind this door. This is what it would be like if Catch-22 had a meaner older brother. Look, I don't make the rules. I just blindly enforce them. We'll be back. Like I care. Hmm. 
Give me the password. Okay. We'll be back. Like I can. So how do we find out the password? Hmm. I love this train. Hi, Levy Bear. Having fun. Thanks, Levy Bear. Enjoy, and remember, if you're not losing, we're not winning. Hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking I need to... Oh, well, we haven't played the... Oh, what's this? The face sign. Buffet closed for a semi-annual food change. Sorry, Max. Ah. Semi-annual food change. Jesus. Okay, uh, we forgot to do the one-armed bandit. The one so it was... bandit. Insert token to play. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were there originally, I think. Um... So yeah, the um, the tokens. Um, I mean, mechanically, I understand that they want you to have come in here and have the tokens before you can use these one-armed bandits and things like that. And they probably don't want you playing the games once you have finished them all. You know, so so it's clear. Okay, you've finished with all those now. Um, so I guess that's why they give you these infinite tokens here, because if they only gave you three or something, then, um, you know, you would have to do everything right, and you could only play each one once. Um, and they also had to make sure that these are, you know, that's not enough to actually get the listening device, because that has to be 10,000. Um, but it's still, you know, kind of confusing that you might have 10,000 tokens or this... Which looks like one token, but is kind of infinite. Sweet mother of bleary-eyed gambling addiction, we won! Yeah, we won, but there's no prize! You gotta hand it to Teddy Bear. He really puts the bandit in one-armed bandit. Hold it! What's the password? This is You may have Oh, okay. So I guess that's what we need the one-armed bandit for, to get this person to come out, but we can't hear them. But we have a listening device. So now can we... Ah, okay, that even works. Ooh. I guess they come out when someone wins, which they don't expect. Still no prize. We're wasting our money, Sam. Hold it. What's the password? This is something you may have. Okay, that's a little weird. That winning here but getting no prize is kind of the the um the way to get the overseer to come up. Like I would have expected him to at least, you know, say something like uh, who they shouldn't be able to win. Oh, it's no prize. Fine. You know, something like that. And also, I expected us to kind of have to, you know, trick the one-armed bandit. Like, you know, manipulate it. Like, I don't know, put the magnet on it to kind of fix them in place or something like that. Organic listening device. Did you get it all? Yeah, I got it. Now listen up. Here's what they said. Hold it. What's the password? That's gotta be, what, a hundred times I've come through that door today and you still don't recognize me? It's the bear heads, boss. They all look alike. Leave the gun, take the cannolis. You may enter. Now get me in that pocket. Move! Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Give me the password. Leave the gun. Take the cannolis. Leave the gun. Take the cannolis. You may enter. What will 
you see. This is it? Where's the food? Surely there's a buffet back here. Hey, look. That must be Teddy Bear. Where do you wise guys think you're going? Who, us? We were just browsing. We frown on that around here. I'm Chuckles, the casino pit boss. I've had my eye on you. Uh, how long have you been watching us? Long enough. Do I look any taller than I did ten minutes ago? Your win at poker was, shall we say, creative. Why, whatever are you insinuating? That was nice work. You also somehow got the password to let you into this room. Very clever. I'm impressed. The Toy Mafia can use guys who are long on brains and short on scruples. You interested? Alright, and I guess this is the point uh, where we take our government mandated break. And I'll be right back um, after this break.